uh, which I do too, of course. But I think it's important that we think about them and talk about them. Uh, and I understand that the county library will set up a Chinese section soon in a branch at Clarkson Road. Just shows you how much we have dispersed in the community, but how much interest there is also in in um, in and not stereotyping. In mm -hmm. other words, learning how much there is. Uh, you came from Hong Kong, Tom. Yes, which was obviously gone through its own struggles in terms of mainland well, pr China. pretty much back in 1997, the transition going back to China. Um, I don't think there's much change, but of course there's, there's certain things that of course have uh, shifted a little bit. Um, so pretty much, you know, pe people have adapted to it and adjusted to it by now. Well, uh, Jason's on the line, and I think he, he maybe have some food on his mind. Jason? <laughs> well, I hate to keep going back to restaurants, but I wonder if <laughs> folks can shed light on the origin of the St. Paul sandwich, which I've only ever seen here in St. Louis. Another question I have, though, maybe after that, is um, I saw a documentary called, well, it wasn't actually, it was a fictional film called Chan is Missing. Yeah. It was really well done, technically. But in it, the made it very clear that every Chinese person, this was said in New York, um, had to sort of declare their allegiance to Taiwan or the People's Republic. This affected who will do business with you. And I remember in Chicago I saw signs, Taiwanese flags up, and um, People's Republic flags up. It was during a holiday, a national holiday in both countries. And I wonder if there's any of that sort of thing here. Uh, any comment? Before I take another call? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, I think yeah, it's like in the other Chinese communities across the country. Uh, Chinese in St. Louis also you can see this uh, uh, divides and uh, our diversity because people came from different backgrounds, yeah. geographical backgrounds. Some came from Taiwan, some from Hong Kong, some from mainland China. Uh, so I think it's naturally they uh, uh, claim their allegiance to the country or area of their, their origin. Uh, the Chinese from mainland China, you know, you, they uh, have a closer connection with uh, government in China. You know, likewise, you know, uh, Chinese from other groups are also connected to, to their uh, the land of uh, uh, origin. Well, we have another insight on the Liang family from Robert. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, Ro yeah, Robert. Yes, you mentioned Annie Leong. Yeah. Uh, when I was young, I'm 79 now. Uh, a fellow lawyer and myself, uh -huh. you see twice a week at Asia Cafe, uh -huh. where we met Annie. We fell deeply in love with her. She was yeah. beautiful, mm -hmm. as well as talented and intelligent. To show you how intelligent she was, we would leave with a conversation, and when we came back the next time, she would immediately pick up from that same conversation. She remembered everything. Fantastic. She used to show us how they grew the roots and or whatever the bamboo roots or whatever it was down in the basement. And uh, we tried to get the data a dozen, dozen times. Her parents would never let her, of course. She <laughs> went to China two or three times to find a husband from the province. That's just fun. At least that's what we were told by her. And she was just wonderful. I mean, of, I, I, a previous call, I talked about her. I don't think if I could say enough about her because she was most, most how do I say it, the most wonderful Magnificent person I ever met in my life. It's, uh, yeah. Elena, th you know, that uh, is interesting, the friendships that mm -hmm. are developed around going someplace and, yeah. and constantly until they know you. Oh, yeah. She yes. introduced us to so many different types of Chinese foods because mm -hmm. uh, she knew we were willing to, well, she had us, you know. She, we were in love with her. <laughs> we, <laughs> we did anything she'd give us. <laughs> and we learned all of hot Chinese food because yeah. of her. Uh, it, uh, it was a different era, uh, yeah. just something unusual. Thanks, Robert. You're welcome. Bye yeah. Bye. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Robert. I'm really glad to hear all these fascinating stories about <laughs> Annie. I wish you could live to hear all of this. And if you look at the book, my book, you'll find a couple of pictures about Annie Liang and the An Liang Tang, so-called An Liang uh, Merchant and uh, Labor's Association, which was a very active community organization prior to 1970s. You know, Annie Liang, uh, as a uh, uh, some of you mentioned she was really ambassador of the Chinese community. You know, she she was uh, well uh, in in uh, versed in both Chinese and English. So she was a spokesperson. Uh, even she was not a formal member of the Anlian because Anlian was a fraternal organization, only accepting male members of the Chinese <laughs> community. But she, as a female, you know, she served as a spokesperson of the community, and she represented uh, the Chinese community really very well. Uh, 
I, I, we, oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Yes. First of all, let me answer Jason's question about the St. Paul sandwich. Uh, the St. Paul sandwich, we still scratch our head today as to what that is, uh, even though my mom and dad had the restaurant, but we we're a turnabout, and they asked us the segment about how St. Paul sandwich came about. So that kind of <laughs> answers that question. Jim and Robert, who both uh, talked about Ann Leon, and as well as that, the Japanese uh, person and so forth, I forgot his name as he mentioned it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I want to make comments on is this, is that we have a strong foundation we've built for years and that we have to move forward as an Asian community. And how do we do so is that we need more of Annie Long, Leon in order for us to have a voice out there because that's very important that the Asian community is going to have their strength based on voice. And we have more of Annie Leong then, then, then the Asian community will be more accepted into the community. Uh, John, you have, a, you have something to contribute? Oh, yes, I do. I, a question about, the, I guess, the new Chinatown that Thomas was talking about, and it goes on with what you guys are talking about. Um, I'm wondering about um, entrepreneurship and uh, business opportunities within the new Chinatown besides restaurants, and what are the challenges that the possible investors would face, and what opportunities are actually there? Uh, thanks, John. Uh, that sounds like a question for you. Sure. Thomas. I'm sorry, what was the gentleman's name? He wanted about the business opportunities for investment. Uh, in, in addition to the long, we had discussed uh, one area. Uh, either of you have anything to... Well, inve investments um, mm -hmm. in the economy that we live in today, uh, investment is always a great opportunity. It may be from the Asian standpoint, from an African-American standpoint, from a Caucasian standpoint. Um, business is business as a, as a whole. If we could collaborate as two different cultures, us, everybody, as we speak of today, uh, as a melting pot, how we could collaborate in order to become successful. I think in business, it usually takes a um, all types, uh, and not only personality, but all types of cultures, too, as well. Well, it's interesting to me that you, obviously, your family had a fairly typical was restaurant, but you went on to education, and you chose to go into this capital area because you must see that that's like so many other young people today. Money is the name of the game. Well, as an investment banker, I see a lot of entrepreneurs, true entrepreneurship within most of Asian Americans. Uh, they like to go out there and really hard, work hard. At the same time, they would like to be able to be their own boss, really. Well, and, it's opportunity, too. It's, right. Opportunities they, they seek and they work hard at it. And I want to be able to help them and develop some early stages, maybe a scientist, maybe in life sciences, maybe in all industries. Basically, I want to be able to help leverage some of the opportunities and bridge the opportunities for these uh, entrepreneurs. A point that needs to be made, and perhaps you can make it, is this, uh, the old culture continues. There are two Chinese uh, language newspapers, and I guess uh, mm -hmm. also English language. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, you know, the Chinese American mm -hmm. Forum. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, you have this outreach to new areas and new suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you know, the newer community, uh, you know, which I call the cultural community, which uh, usually it's hard to see it because you don't have a clearly, you know, the mark, you know, the physical landmark. Uh, but they do exist there, you know, um, among the Chinese language schools. There are three Chinese language schools now and uh, a dozen of the Chinese churches I have mentioned earlier. Well, I think there's plenty of, I mean, there's so much to talk about. We yeah. didn't even get into the, the, you know, the Taiwan and the mainland China yeah. and, and, of course, all the, the, the interchange that's going on. But I do want to encourage people to read your book on Chinese St. Louis. Hu Ping Ling yeah. is the author from Truman State University. And, um, and uh, uh, I guess they could call in and get the information yeah. on ordering. And, of course... KWMU website, you can, we'll have all the information about it. And of course, uh, 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 Thomas Wong, who is uh, a businessman, but who I think represents the generation that is moving on and hopefully all of us moving on together. Uh, this is a topic that we, we should do ourselves. We need to get out in the community, as you say, and get to know one another so that it's more than you know, more than restaurants. <laughs> uh, tomorrow at uh, St. Louis on the Air, we have uh, a fascinating topic, which will be the stigma associated with mental illness. As you know, there have been some controversy lately about whether you should be um, treating mental illness, or some people are saying there isn't even insurance to do it. So I hope you'll join us tomorrow. I'm Harriet Woods on St. Louis on the Air. Uh, archived versions of past St. Louis on the Air programs could be heard on the web at kwmu.org. St. Louis on the Air is a production of 90.7 KWMU. I want to thank my guests and encourage all of you to get out there and mix it up. Uh, I'm Harriet Woods.